Okay, we're now on part three of the chapter about the kidney um, and osteoporosis from the book John McDougall, The Doctor Who Fought for You, written by me. And this is from Dr. John McDougall's newsletter, March 2011. This is a good thing to know. If you have any uh, yourself or any friends that just had a baby and they're considering giving the baby formula, this is the best formula. He, he, just, he discusses it in more detail at the newsletter, but it's basically a hypoallergenic uh, cow's milk-based formula. Okay, I don't like soy, especially not a uh, non-organic soy, which might have hexane in it, neurotoxin. In general, you know, an avoid formula. But anyways, um, Dr. McDougall newsletter, January 2011, the McDougall diet for pregnancy. And here's what he says. Um, as of January 2011 and the father of three grown children, as well as grandfather of three grandchildren, I have been advising families about nutrition for a long time. The key point is that pregnancy does not change the human diet. Obesity of the pregnant mother leads to cesarean births. Preeclampsia is a serious sickness of pregnancy. Morning sickness protects babies from meat. Fish and omega-3 fats adversely affect pregnancy. So yeah, you don't need to eat special foods for pregnancy. That's the point he's making there. Okay, now here is the Dr. McDougall newsletter from May 2004 about food additives. And he says, yes, they, the articles confirm that they affect your child's behavior and they impair child's behavior. There's also the newsletter from October 2007. The effects of a double-blind placebo-controlled uh, study on artificial food colorings and benzoate preservative challenge on hyperactivity in a general population of preschool children showed that these... Uh, artificial food colorings and preservatives cause hyperactive behavior. And this reappeared when the chemicals were introduced at three weeks. The authors concluded that all children are likely to benefit if artificial food coloring, dyes, and benzoate were removed from their food. And I, I you know, recently wrote a book, uh, Food, Mood, and IQ. All of this processed food, it's all bad for children. It's bad for their brains. It's bad for their bodies in other ways. It has hormonal effects that are harmful. It has epigenic effects that are harmful. You don't want to eat processed food. You don't want your kid eating processed food. Okay, um, Dr. McDougall continues. This is his newsletter from September 2009. And the way to get all these newsletters, you just go to Dr. McDougall's website, drmcdougall.com, and you'll see a little link to go to his newsletters. You can just type it in the search menu. Okay, this is about the medications, cholesterol-lowering lowering statins, and how they can cause weakening of the muscle and be associated with increased risk of falling. And this is Dr. McDougall. Statin therapy uh, effect on muscle function and falls uh, in patients at risk in a community dwelling setting. Um, they found that statin use can exacerbate, make worse, muscle performance declines and falls associated with the aging without a concomitant decrease in muscle mass. And this effect might be reversible with cessation, stopping the medicines. Uh, so a common side effect of statin therapy is skeletal muscle damage, myopathy, which sometimes includes muscle pain, myalgia, and weakness. Muscle enzymes like creatine kinase may or may not rise in the blood with this damage. Okay, so you see where this is going. You have an older patient, and you're giving them a drug that weakens their muscles. Stupid, okay? In addition, you have an older patient, quite often they overtreat their hypertension. A very common cause of falls in older patients is overtreated hypertension. So you drop the pressure low, their brain doesn't get enough blood, and they fall down. And then old people, they're relatively weak. They, they have a high risk of fracture. So that's a bad combination, you know. Statin, must, statin medication weakening the patient, overtreatment of hypertension, they fall down because they're weak to begin with, they fracture a hip, they got a high chance to die from that. Most of the patients I see that fall down, they don't have anything. They're just, you know, a little bit embarrassed, but they're okay. When the muscles of patients on statins were evaluated with electron microscopy, it was found that over 70% had muscle cell damage, even when they were not complaining of pain. Statins are a mitochondrial inhibitor. That's why they also increase the risk of diabetes. You know, it's typical, and you have to treat like a 1,000 patients just to get a few to benefit. It's another one of these things where, you know, medicine hypes all its drugs, but in reality, they're kind of stupid. And they used to say, oh, we should put statins in the, in the drinking water. You know, it's obviously completely stupid. Why would you want to put a mitochondrial inhibitor? Stupid. Okay. 
All right, Dr. McDougall continues, the safest and least expensive way to lower cholesterol is just to eat a low-fat diet with no cholesterol, meaning no animal foods, just like the McDougall diet. Um, Dr. McDougall has a video on protein, uh, and he talks about sarcopenia is not a problem to be solved by eating more protein. Okay, that's an important statement because there's a lot of nutrition, uh, famous nutrition doctors out there saying, oh, old people need to eat more protein. McDougall is contradicting that directly here. McDougall is saying sarcopenia is not a problem to be solved by eating more protein. The treatment is exercise. Exercise is a helpful treatment for sarcopenia. Extra dietary protein is harmful to the body, to the kidneys, the bones, and the liver. Protein has nitrogen in it. Only protein has nitrogen in it. There is no nitrogen in fats and carbohydrates. When you eat protein, the main job of the kidneys is to excrete the extra nitrogen. So you're increasing the workload of your kidney, especially if you're eating animal protein, because then you cause all the superimposed inflammation, which also increases kidney workload. And dietary sodium and vasoconstrict the arteries of the kidney. I mean, that makes sense. That's why Kempner, to protect the kidneys, he put the patients on a vegan diet, low fat. Rice is only 1% of calories from fat. No animal foods to minimize inflammation, minimize dietary sodium, to minimize vasoconstriction. Okay, so remember that. Sarcopenia is not to be treated by increased dietary protein. Okay, extra protein is harmful to the kidneys, the bones, and the liver. Um, then he says, no one is deficient in protein. There is no such thing. The studies that say old people need to eat more protein are industry-funded studies. This is just a way to sell protein supplements and animal foods. Protein supplements aren't just worth, worthless. They are harmful. Okay, so he does not believe in that. Okay, that's the end of the chapter. The one thing I would mention to you, too, is that the, you know, these protein supplements... They're pretty famous for having heavy metal contaminants. Anytime you sell a powder, if you throw a heavy metal in there, it's any powder food you're selling by weight, you can then make it heavier and you can get more money for the amount of stuff. The heavy metals themselves are cheap. You throw a little lead in there or some other heavy metal. Okay, if you read Consumer Reports, there's been a couple articles on this. One was like 2012 or something. Um, they're quite routinely contaminated with heavy metals. A lot of other foods that come in powder form are contaminated with heavy metals. Again, it's profitable to do that to... So anyways, I hope that was helpful.